Today I'm going to be telling you about a project to upgrade my belt grinder for knife making and uh, leather crafting work, other kind of crafting. So I have a belt grinder, um, it's a 2x72 made by a local fella, Steve Goddard, who's uh, the son of uh, Wayne Goddard, who was one of the famous uh, folks who got lots of folks into knife making and actually reading his book was one of the things that got me started in knife making. So Steve was kind enough to sell me this uh, belt grinder he put, put, put together himself and uh, it had a a uh, one-speed motor on it. It was a brushless uh, induction motor, um, single phase, and you can't, you can't, uh, as I learned from watching Jeremy Fielding's YouTube channel, you can't actually uh, uh, moderate the speed on a single phase motor like that. So what I did was I uh, purchased a, a new motor, a three-phase motor, and a three-phase uh, motor controller, variable feed drive, uh, and uh, I actually learned a lot of the things I needed to be able to, to do this project from Jeremy Fielding's YouTube channel, so I'm going to put a link to that in the description so folks can follow that if they want to, if they haven't run into this stuff yet, but he's got a lot of great explanations, and, and he usually does stuff by finding all the pieces. I <laughs> I cut a corner and, uh, and actually just went ahead and bought all this stuff. So what you can see there is a, a K-Back uh, 24 DF 1 horsepower NEMA 4X VFD a variable feed drive that's on the right. It's the box that has the brains that runs everything and on the left is the motor I bought. It's a one horsepower Leeson 3450 RPM TEFC three phase motor. Did my research. I wanted a motor that was not going to get uh, fouled up by all the dust and debris from the crafting. So that's a totally enclosed motor and it's a totally enclosed variable feed drive too so don't have to worry about uh, them overheating uh, from some kind of enclosure I made. They're designed to be closed up shed heat themselves and uh, also not get fouled up by dust and debris from the knife grinding, handle grinding, leather crafting, etc. That's something they really want. You, you know, this this was on the pricey end of things, but you can go even pricier if you want something that would be food grade. I <laughs> didn't need that though. Okay, so you can see the inside of the VFD here and uh, it shows the three phases that go out to the motor and the two phases that come in from the, um, from the city. So those are the three phases to the motor. And then you can see the three phases described here. It's got several different voltage setups. I'm using the low voltage setup. Uh, that's the, the VFD that I got. So I have to connect those two together. And then it's set for 230 uh, volts from the factory, but I have to change it to uh, uh, 115, basically 120. So I'm using a regular outlet to run this and not one of the high power like dryer style outlets. That means I have to move this jumper over from the 230 to the 115. So it'll actually work right and that turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I expected. It's it's really on there good so I couldn't just like wiggle it out with my fingers and having to use my Leatherman to, to pop it off and move it over. That's a really important step otherwise nothing's going to work right. Then I got, uh, yep, I got some liquid tight fittings to hold everything together again to help keep dust out of the inside of the machine so it'll, it'll work and, and not get fouled up. So I'm getting those set up on the bottom of the VF here and then this is actually a leftover cable from a, a shop light I had that burned out but had the right rating and so I was able to use this cable to run everything. So I didn't I, I did scrounge that one. Here you go. So the black and white power coming in from the uh, from the city is the black and then the, new, the white is the neutral and then the green is the ground. You want to have a ground so plug it in just to make sure that it works the lights come on. Of course, it has capacitors inside. I, th I think it does. They keep the power on for a little while, so you have to be careful once you unplug it. You don't want to touch it until the lights go off and you're sure that the power's all drained out. So now I'm going to pop out this plug so I can put in the liquid tight fitting for the cable to run to the three phase motor. And I had some leftover conduit from another project that I was able to use. You can see that I've, I've labeled one of the um, black wires with the uh, red tape so I can just keep track of it. Again, the green is the ground. You always want to do a good ground. You don't want to have your stuff ungrounded because uh, that'll, that's the way you keep from electrocuting yourself. Make sure everything's grounded. Helps to protect the equipment too. Then you got the three phases go into those three points. It actually doesn't matter which one is which. It, it doesn't actually matter. Um, if the motor goes the wrong way, you can just switch two of them and then the motor will go the correct direction when you get done, which is actually what I end up having to do here. I'm going to pop out the, the um, pop out for the, again, liquid type fittings to hold everything together. But I'm not actually using a liquid type brand conduit, so 
I end up having to put uh, electrical tape to seal everything up. Yeah. So now I'm getting the wire stripped off to connect it up to the motor itself. Again, first thing you do is you want to get the ground connected. I ordered these uh, components from Electric Motors Wholesale online. I'll put the links in the description so folks can look at what I ordered. Think about getting the same thing themselves if they want or shopping up something more appropriate for themselves. You know, what works for me might not work for you. Honestly, if I had more funds, I would have gone for a, a bigger motor, but going from one horsepower to, to two horsepower is a pretty big price point step up because you have to get a much beefier VFD as well as a beefier motor. Okay, everything's wired up. And I just wanted to see if it would work. So I'm going to uh, clamp the motor down to the bench so you don't want it to throw itself off the bench. It, it has enough torque. <laughs> it could move itself away if you didn't clamp it down. Okay, there it goes. See? I can control the speed with my knob. It's going the wrong way though, so I end up having to switch the wire. Yeah, so here it is and not sped up. This is in real time. Okay, next day I had to take it back off the bench and close up the panel. There's always one of those hair raising parts of electrical work for me is getting all of the wire stuff back into the box. Hoping that I don't get things to come undone. I'm sure if I was a pro I wouldn't have any trouble with it, but I'm not a pro. Yeah, and then like I said, I have to use electrical tape to make sure that uh, everything's really sealed up. I don't want the the dust from grinding to get inside the electronics and screw it up. So I'm trying to get everything tightened up, chip shape. Why am I using red and blue? Just because I like the colors. I had them lying around. Use the blue on the blue motor and the red over on the VFD. Screwing it all back together. Now that part's done. I got to get it onto the grinder itself. So you can see it's got the old uh, single phase motor on it. This is a nice motor. It's pretty hefty. I think I might uh, make a new base for it and turn it into a um, disc grinder. I think it'd be good for that. If you've got other ideas for what I can use it for, let me know. Send me a uh, comment. And while I'm busy unscrewing these things, I'll just say it, it, it really helps uh, helps me out here and helps grow this uh, channel if you if you give me a like on the video and you subscribe so take a moment to do that you can see my let it pour sign sticker back there from the um, falling sky <laughs> falling sky location in the uo student union so uh they're a local brew pub really really like their their beer and their food yeah, i'm showing which it's a one eighth inch drive allen key to to take this pulley off anyway uh, I really like the Falling Sky folks, and they make some great food and some great uh, beer. Now look at all the junk that's in the back of that pulley. Probably ought to pull it off and clean it every every now and then. Okay, so that motor's off. I still have to get the control box off. It's, uh, it's just wired straight into the outlet with this switch. Oh yeah, I put a little plug in for Zominals. I'll put a link to them in the description too. So one of my friends uh, runs that Etsy site. They sell. Uh, stickers and other cool things with these uh, zombie animals on them. You can see the, the zombie pronghorn they made for me up there. And I got a Viking Braggot sticker too. That's a, another local brew pub. Viking Braggot's one of my other favorite places to go in the Eugene area. Okay, using my uh, power punch to mark the spot for the variable speed controller there. And then I got my drill out to drill a spot for it to sit. I don't, show, I don't show it on this part, but I end up actually having to tap that hole to make this all go together. Uh, and I'll show the tapping on the second hole. I had to cut this. I had to cut this around a little bit just to make it. My elbow was in front of the camera a whole bunch of the time. I'm still learning how to do the video, so I apologize for the bad framing some of the time here. <laughs> 
Okay, so then I had marked uh, the location for the second hole, and now I'm going to drill it out and then cap it. I didn't want to take the thing all the way off, so I'm trying to do it around the box. Get my tap going. Okay, now it's secured tight, snug up both the bottom and the top, and then I just got to get the motor attached on the bottom. That's good. So what I'm doing is uh, just putting the, the nuts and bolts on finger tight to start with so I can get the pulley on and line up the, the pulley on the motor with the pulley that's on the frame. I mean the frame pulley is adjustable for tracking but I want to get them basically in the right alignment to start with so that everything will work. Here we go, i got to put that uh, Woodruff key back onto the motor and then pop the uh, pulley back on using the rubber mallet so I don't scar it up too much. There's that Allen key. There you go. Pulley is back in place. I'm trying to tighten it a little bit with my Leatherman at the end. Okay, see, but the motor's still loose so I can get everything lined up. So I take a belt out just to give me a visual guide. Get it onto the, the tensioning pulley and then line everything up. Once I'm satisfied it's all lined up, then I'm going to tighten up the motor and fix it in place. That's what's going on here. Okay, now it should be good to test out. So that's what I'm doing. Look at that. It works. I got the uh, speed control on my belt binder now. I mean, it cost me like $550 to do it, but, you know, what in $3,000? I paid $300 for the grinder originally, like I said, built by my friend locally, Steve Goddard, and, uh, and then I got $550 in the motor and speed controller, so that means $850 total in the grinder, that's pretty good. I could probably build a frame like this. Uh, for less than that myself, but we've already had one put together that he was um, selling and so I was quicker That's a nice it's a nice setup Yep, here I'm going in, in real time again just to show the whole thing working at the end So if you enjoyed this video uh, Please give me a like if you got some ideas for how I could do things differently or what you would do, give me a comment, uh, let me know about it. And uh, please subscribe to my channel so that I can continue making these videos and um, figuring things out, things out. Basically, I'm figuring it out as I go along and showing you the process. Hopefully some folks will figure things out too and then we can uh, share our experiences. Yep, there you go. It works. Thanks for your time. Bye.